Did you record that video yet? No. Um, I'm rewicking these tanks. You said you were going to do it last week, Joseph. If you don't get it done, I'm taking my mod and you're in the doghouse. Uh, I'm gonna get castrated while I sleep tonight, so... Uh, ain't nothing to it, but to get into it. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Hunky Vape 750 subscriber thank you vlog. I'm your host, DJ Alex, and today we are finally celebrating the 750 plus people who have subscribed to this channel. So first and foremost, I wanna say a heartfelt thank you to all of you, all of you who inspire me to continue making these videos. As you can tell from the intro, I meant to do this last week, but life happens. As far as life happens, it's also been hindering at least Six unfinished projects currently underway for this channel alone. Which brings me to some changes that you're going to be seeing in the very near future. But before I get to that, let me tell you the seven things that we're going to do today. Number one, channel changes. Why am I making changes on this channel? And what are they? Number two. DIY random recipe mixing and review of these brand new flavors. We're gonna shake and vape them, baby. Number three, retro vapes. Oops, I meant retro vape. Number four, vape mail. Yes, I got vape mail from Dash Vapes. So we're gonna take a look at that. Number five, a $500 vape shop hopping excursion that my wife and I did to see what's changed in these vape shops and how are these shops holding up with all this stuff that we're dealing with. What an awesome score of new stuff to try out. Number six, commercial e-liquid tasting. <laughs> It's the unsalted line. Uh, watermelon peach, the number one best-selling flavor in the unsalted line. Number seven. In honor of the 700 plus subscribers so far, we're gonna be holding a waffle. What's a waffle? Well, it's kind of like a box away. Well, you know, a box that has something in it and then it just goes away box away next because it's a box that's filled with stuff that goes away yes and someone who watches this video from the beginning to the end will be able to provide the correct answers needed to become eligible for this waffle oh no i gotta watch this from the beginning to the end listen 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 i'll tell you the details later but if you want to be a recipient of this box. Listen for the seven magic words that make up a magic sentence needed to be a part of this waffle. Hint, these seven words make up a sentence and will be on a Hunky Vape t-shirt in the very near future. So listen here, folks. I've collected so much vape stuff these past two years Yes, you did. And I certainly don't need all of it. So why not rehome these to you folks out there and maybe empower you to get a smoker to quit using a vape? Or maybe you'll want to keep it for yourself. That's up to you. So stick around for this waffle if you're interested. Well, I need a coffee. So how about I put some music on while we go brew some coffee oh, no. and let's finally get to the channel changes. All right, ladies and gentlemen, let me run down the changes that are going to be seeing on this channel. First off, I've been asked to do a podcast. A podcast 
On YouTube? Really? Yes. It's so people can listen to the podcast while they're driving and not have to worry about missing something that might be on the actual video. You know, this idea fascinated me a long time ago as it's gonna require a lot less work on the back end to produce. The Global 20 Vape Science and Advocacy News takes me about four days to produce it. Has anywhere from 70 to 170 cuts in it, plus 20 to 100 overlay images, plus titles or lower thirds. And when there's music added, it adds a whole other day to find, pick, sort what you're gonna see in 20 minutes. Product reviews are about half the work, but they require new products worth reviewing. So long story short, look forward to the Daily Drag podcast in the very near future, right here on this channel. The second change that's in the works, I've almost outgrown this studio already, and I haven't even finished the sound treatment for it. One of the worst things that I've done so far is move my studio from the bedroom into this room. You know, the prospect of adding space for bigger shelves and a tabletop to film the B-roll sounded so good that I didn't plan anything. I just began working on the room and figured, well, I'd simply get to it, and when I got more work done, it was gonna get better, and eventually I'd get it all done, and it would be awesome. That was a horrible decision. First off, this room is half the size of my bedroom and has horrible standing waves that prevent using my original microphone or any large diaphragm condenser microphone. So first, I tried the pod mic, but it didn't live up to my expectations and why you're now hearing me on the Rode Procaster. This thing sounds amazing and was the perfect purchase for a podcast. But it doesn't work well when you're trying to move around or if you want to do some table cam stuff. So that meant buying a shotgun microphone. I mean, that's what they use to make movies. So it should work perfectly for me too. Wrong again. The thing that makes this so wonderful for out of frame capturing sound is also why it can't or shouldn't be used indoors. It introduces phase issues that can't be removed in post-production. So now I've got a lapel microphone coming to theoretically be the best solution to improve the audio on this channel. Bueller, 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 are you still there? Sad reality is that most of you probably haven't even watched Ferris Bueller's Day Off. My point is, this studio has turned into a disaster area. And since I still need to add the correct type of sound treatment, acoustic foam is the biggest snake oil myth being sold today. It costs a small fortune to buy enough to cover your walls and only removes the highest frequencies while doing nothing for the low end. So in order to install the rock wool panels without breaking anything, like the $500 monitor, the whole room needs to be broken down. And while I'm at it, might as well rearrange everything to try and get another year out of this studio. Ultimately, this means that there might be a week where I don't upload a video. I'm not giving up or going away. It's quite the opposite. I'm further improving this studio to make videos faster and better than before. Which brings me to the third change coming for this channel. It is gonna be a live show, random recipe mixing and review, which I'm thinking of calling Mix a Juice with Hunky Vape or mix a drip it hunky vape, or more likely something that you guys are gonna have to come up with. Let's face facts. I'm horrible at creative naming things. 
I can crank out a 30-page paper in no time flat. But if you ask me to come up with a catchy phrase or the perfect name for something, most of the time I'm just going to draw a blank. So I'm going to ask all of you guys watching this video to come up with a name to call this live show. And yes, ladies and gentlemen, show is the first magic word. The first magic word is show, S-H-O-W. Comment below your idea for the live show and make sure that you end your suggestion with the word show. If I use your idea or multiple people end up suggesting the same idea and it's the name of the show, I'll let whoever the winner is, drawn by random from all those using the same title, pick live on the first live show an item from a random shelf behind me. Yes, you are going to be rewarded for your efforts by picking the name of this show. And your reward is going to be something sitting on this shelf. It's just been collecting dust. So please come up with an idea and leave it as a comment to this video. Hey, feel free to leave multiple comments if you've got multiple ideas. And don't forget to end your comment with the magic word, show. If you can't come up with an idea, no biggie. Then just comment, mix a juice with Hunky Vape Show. But I kind of like mix a drip at Hunky Vape. But ultimately, it's up to all of you to leave a comment and come up with a name for this live random mixing show. So, channel changes. We've got the podcast. Number two is the live show. I'm still going to be doing the Global 20. Man product reviews. Plus, the next change. I've talked about this before, but now I'm really going to give it a go. I know some people say that the hobby side or the crafting aspects of vaping is dead. But I don't think so. Looking at all of the news recently and all of the laws being adopted, I think DIY vaping is going to be making a comeback. As more countries and provinces and states or areas ban or tax to death vaping, the diehard vapers are going to need to learn the crafting aspects of vaping. For making your own coils or DIY liquid or modding vape gear. I think the number of people needing to do this is going to grow. Especially when the FDA finally gets around to cracking the whip and starts sending the ATF to police vape shops. You know what? Their customers aren't going to have much of a choice. It takes time to order products from England or Italy or China or whomever still has the stuff that all these people are going to need. And in the meantime... They're going to need to know how to clean or re-wick a stock coil or how to use a rebuildable tank for the first time. And that's where the brand new Save My Vape series is going to fill the void and help these ex-smokers from going back to deadly combustible cigarettes. Just think of it as vaping 201. And yes, I plan on making Vaping 101 videos. But after that's all released, I've already started planning for Vaping 201. It's the Save My Vape series. This is going to take Ohm's Law teaching to a whole new level. I plan on showing people how to go and actually make a regulated box mod. Where to source these parts and how to safely solder them all together to make a functioning box mod. In some countries like Thailand, they've already completely banned vaping imports. And yes, I know, I know there's a black market and that's always gonna be one way to get these items. But another way is to simply make your own. For these people, it really is back to the basics of vaping. But at least they won't have to go back to smoking cigarettes. So, 
That wraps up the channel changes. Number one, we've got a podcast. Number two, I'm going to be revamping the studio. Number three is a live show. Number four, Vaping 101. And then we've got Vaping 201. So now it's finally time for DIY random recipe mixing and review. Listen, listen, listen. I know some of you are thinking this guy is only thinking about me, 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 me. All the things he's doing. And yes, you would sort of be right. Me is the second magic word today. So go jot that down next to the first word. What? Have you already forgot the first word? Do you have Alzheimer's like I do? Okay, 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 okay. I'm not going to make you rewatch the video up to this point to go find the first word. So jot this down. Are you ready? Jot this down. Show is the first word. Me is the second word. You got that? Did you write show me on your paper? You're going to need these words if you want this waffle. Awesome. Moving on. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, this is my flavor stash at eliquidrecipes.com. Lots and lots of different flavors available to mix from. And this doesn't even include my latest order from Bull City Flavors. I placed an order from them because I was watching DIY or Die Wayne do his uh, mixing, and he mixed up Jacked Up Grape My Way. And you all know... Salty Man Purple Rain is my, one of my favorite flavors. So when I saw this, man, it really piqued my curiosity. I'm like, oh, oh, I got the Concord grapes with Stevia, but I don't have this other stuff. I got super sweet. So I need to place an order for some flavors. Well, we got that order placed and... And we have all of these new flavors that we're going to have to place back into my flavor stash. And those headphones are so restrictive, almost as restrictive as having this lovely microphone right in my face. It's going to be great for a podcast. But when I'm trying to do this table cam overhead stuff, this is going to become a problem. And I can't wait for that lapel mic to get here. Sorry, not what you wanted to hear. So, how about I just throw some music on and do some random recipe mixing? You and me would be incredible. I think I love you. Yeah. What are we going to mix today? What are we going to mix today? Ooh, look at this. Tropical Rush Mango Pineapple. Hmm, that sounds interesting. What do we got here? Golden Pineapple, Super Sweet and Sweet Mango. 10% of Golden Pineapple. What's well, pushing it? Sweet Mango at five, that's normal. Super Sweet. Two notes. All right, listen here, folks. Two notes is pretty cool, but how about if we um, make that a trio with some pina colada? All right, let's flip back over and take a look at the recipe. So as you can see on here, this tropical rush mango pineapple, well, he's got 10% of golden pineapple in there, and that just seems really high to me. And here's how you can tell. If, you, if you're new to mixing, this is the best part of why I love e-liquid recipes. You can click on the flavor that's in a recipe. And if you scroll down, you'll see this one section called notes. Now, anytime that you've got somebody that wants to document notes from a flavor, they can go and add to this list. So looking at this one, we have single flavor median is 7.5%. Well, that's not a single flavor recipe we were looking at. And he's got a 10%. For single flavor, 7.5. I mean, give or take a little bit. But 
when you have it as part of a different recipe with other things, the average median is 3%. So we're going to definitely need to cut that one back. And you can literally go through all the different flavorings out there, look at the notes on it, and it'll tell you exactly what to expect from that flavoring. Sweet pineapple taste with a bit of added sugar and a touch of subtle tartness. More of a canned pineapple taste. Off notes, slight notes of orange, but not unpleasant. Well, that's kind of a good thing. All right, so let's go back to this recipe and let's adapt this. What else we got? Super sweet, we know of. You need to keep that at a low concentration. 0.75 is okay. I normally do 0.5 in my recipes, but okay. Sweet mango, capella. That's a 5%. Let's go down, take a look, see what notes are there. 8% may be too strong. Preferred single flavor mix at 2%. Single flavor, 6%, 5%, 5%. Single flavor, 5%. All right. This guy has 25% as a single flavor. That's just way ridiculous. 25% of the juice needs to be this. No. Well, this guy, Vape Boss, is at 10%. So the guy's not by himself. Most authentic mango out there, ripe, 8%, 15%. All right. Well, just looking at the, the thing, we have median is four. All right. So let's go and adapt this recipe of ours. All right, today we're gonna make 60 mil. I'm gonna make it for my wife. What do we have on hand? And we're going to add liquid barn. Now 12% is way too much. So how about we cut this back to six and let's cut back the pineapple to six. And where's our overall percentage now? So we're still at 17.75% flavoring. I think that's quite a bit of flavoring. So maybe we should cut some of that back a little bit more. All right, so we'll do five there five there and five we'll give it a try like that all three of them being equally added to the recipe and then if something stands out more or less than the other well we can revisit this when we come back to make another bottle of it and we can cut back something that is too strong and we can adjust the things that we don't get enough of a flavor of it's all a matter of experimentation start off with an educated guess give it a try Shake it, vape it, try it a week later, and see what you think. So, when it's time to go make another batch, you just make the small modifications you need to to appease your palate, because ultimately, it doesn't matter what anybody else thinks. All that matters is whether you like it or not. So, this is what we're going to go and mix up. Gonna take the notes out of it. Change the title because now it's a mango pineapple culotta is the adaptation that we're coming up with. And we're going to save this. And I'm going to go and grab the stuff I need to mix this. And off we go.
Just like that, we've got a bottle of Tropical Rush. 60 mils. We're going to give that a shake. Put that off to the side. Because I want us to be able to try out this other recipe. Jacked up grape my way. So let me grab another bottle, grab the ingredients, and we're gonna get this mixed up too. So here is the recipe that we're going to be mixing up. Now, time to get it done. So good. Tell me, is it real? Tell me, do you feel the same? Tell me what you feel like. Do you feel what I feel? Is this love a way to it. That's too much. It's gonna be sweet. Just a hair over on the PG. And since this is empty, I need to go and get a new one. That one too. Tell me what you feel like. Do you feel what I feel? Is this love a way? Awesome. Well, how about we let those sit here a little while and move on to our next segment? And just like that, through the power of television, we are now on your retro vape. So did you get it? Your, your is the next word for our waffle. Write that down now. Your, Y-O-U-R. Okay. So for our retro vape segment today, I pulled out the Bruce Pro Innovations Yellow Jacket. I did that because back when I did the review on the Bushido V3, this awesome flip top dripper, I came across Bruce who taught me how to paint your wicks after you get them coated in your liquid. So I went and ordered myself the Bruce Pro Innovations Yellow Jacket. Because in that video, I said, you can tell that the characteristics of the tank have pieces inherited from this one. So what does this look like? Look at that. Well, that's pretty cool looking. Nice Altum cap. And, ooh, I thought that was gonna be stuck on there. Look at that. It's got a crown over top of your coils. 
That's going to be a beautiful little squonker. Squonking tripper. Yeah. Gonna have to lube up them rings. Them O rings. Did it come with anything else? Do I have to dig up some coils? All right. It's in the top side. Okay, in the package, we've got some Allen keys. We have a squonk pin, some spare row rings, and some grub screws. But unfortunately, what we don't have is a set of coils. So, let me grab a set of coils. And we'll get this sucker set up and try it out. All right, so for this tank, I went and pulled up the old coil master box and got to myself some fuse clapping coils. 26. Okay, times two, wrapped in 39. It's a uh, NI-80 coil, three millimeter inner diameter, supposed to come out at 0 0.5. And with this parallel setup, it should be about 0.25 when we're done. I'm going to prep this the way I normally prep all my stuff. I'm going to take it, wrap it a little further around. So we can make a complete turn on the ends. And I'm going to grab my non-marring pliers and give that a little bend. Give this one a little bend. And now there's our prep coil. Drop it in the little coil trimmer tool. What we got? There's eight millimeters there. And we got some overhang, so let's even it up to eight millimeters. See how that fits and then adjust accordingly. Wow. Not too shabby. Get it all tightened up. Give it a little dry fire. We'll find out if this is any good. Pull this side up a little. see that center portion of this has airflow that hits that coil right on the side and because there isn't much room on the top it's literally going to force air to go down and then come back up the outer side pretty ingenious design all right what's this thing ohm out at point one Oh yeah, 30 watts, that's not gonna be enough. Ooh, got a hot spot there. Vaping is better than smoking. This camera will not focus today. All right, so while we're letting that cool off, let me tell you about my little experiment I got going on right now with uh, cotton, different types of wicking material for vaping. So this is what I'm currently testing right now. Ordered it from Amazon, came as a box like this, has 50 of them in there. 
with organic cotton, already shoelaced, individual pieces, and now just replace the order and instead of coming in this little box, now it's coming as a pouch. Dr. Coil Cotton. Preloaded. Look who makes them. You might have seen a tank out there by the same company. Shh, don't tell Amazon. All right, so I'm gonna go get another coffee and then we'll get this thing wicked up, give it a try. And we're gonna finally give a chance to try out those e-liquid recipes that we just got done making. I really love the fact on here that these shoelaces slide right off of the cotton. So if you needed to use the extra length of this, you could do it. But obviously you're gonna to have to comb it out because this is compacted pretty well in here. But I have done that in the past. When you needed something that was a little bit longer wick than what it would have been if you would have just cut it off at the edge of the laces. All right, so let's comb this out just a little bit. there's no matted ends I heard from a friend of mine who saw you just the other day oh, all right there we go got it on the smock scar 18 time since you've been around but that looks pretty nice. Make the streets unsafe together, baby. We were young and foolish. All right, first toke on the Bruce Pro Innovations yellow jacket. I've decided it's been too long, baby. Reaching out to touch your heart. Hope for a maybe. I get a one way ticket down the memory lane. There are two hearts beating. Nothing will ever be the same. We had a chance to not too shabby. This is one of those tanks where I can tell that this shoelace cotton does impart a slight flavor on here. And if it's like the other ones that I've tried so far, don't you vape on that a couple of times? diminishes and gets to the point where you don't notice it. And I haven't been able to identify if it actually changes or if you just get used to that flavor. I've gone to the point now where I've literally wicked it up, did it, and then tried it the next day to see if it's there and didn't notice anything. But that's the reason why this cotton experiment that I got going on it's been going on for probably like six months now because there's so many different types of cotton that are out there. And I've caught whiffs of this same note from Cotton Bacon and um, Coilmasters Pro Cotton. But as far as this being a retro vape, I'm glad I picked this thing up. And that's something you guys ought to watch for too. Sometimes, you know, when I go shopping for supplies for vaping, I'll go to the clearance section and see what they have on there because you never know what you're gonna come across. Matter of fact, you might've seen it on the opening for this vlog. My wife got me. The Nightmare 25. Yeah. She picked this thing up, she stopped at a vape shop. This is by Suicide Mods. She stopped at a local vape shop because she needed an extra set of batteries for work. And she got talking with the guy at the shop. New shop we've never been to, it's done in Pittsburgh. 
She works this down there and pick this thing up. Look at that. Engraving on the side. Got vertical air slots on it. I'm excited to give that thing a try. But the point being, you never know what you can get your hands on these days. And you never know what somebody is going to put into their clearance bin. I've walked into shops before, found a custom $75 dripper like this and picked the thing up for 10, 15 bucks on clearance. Ain't nothing wrong with it. Just cause it's been sitting on the shelf for a couple of years. That was the case with this yellow jacket. I can't even remember who I bought it from, but I am so glad that I did. So I'm gonna play with that for a little while and I'll come back to it on our next thank you vlog. Hmm. Oh yeah, I like that. All right, what else we got coming up next? Oh my goodness, this is the part my wife has been dying for me to get done with. This is our $500 shopping spree that we did. We went back home to Cleveland and while we were in town, we went and revisited the stores that we did on my last vlog. Went to Brick City Vapors, naturally. Go to North Olmstead, you gotta stop at Brick City Vapors. Had a wonderful conversation with her. And her vape shop is just like a lot of the other vape shops nowadays. They've diversified their inventory there because I mean, you gotta keep the sales volume up so you can pay the rent and still make a couple bucks at the end of the day. So they've diversified their vape shop and they're getting different clientele in there. And she says that the place is doing wonderful. She's gotten to the point now where it's like, why worry about it? There is nothing you can do about it. These politicians are going to enact whatever ridiculous laws they come up with because they've got lobbyists in there shoving money in the re-election fund for them to vote this way or vote that way. Sometimes I wonder what's the point in having hearings, public hearings, other than to get your, you know, comments on record. What's the point? These politicians are bought and sold. Dime a dozen. That's neither here nor there. This isn't about, you know, getting into politics because I'm trying to have a good time today and, you know, just focus on the fun stuff. But long story short, she's gotten to the point now where it's like she's going to do what she can, get as many people to quit smoking as possible, service the people that have already quit smoking, and keep her customers happy. Get what she can. Inventory-wise, that's one of the first places where I realized these vape shops are having a hard time now getting the things to restock on their shelves. And yeah, I mean, suppliers still have, distribution centers still have stuff. But some of the alternate routes that they used to pick stuff up at, you know, those ones are no longer available. Matter of fact, I was just looking at the news the other day and I realized that um, Alibaba, who the us in the United States haven't been able to buy from there for a while because of legislation that was passed. But the rest of the world was still being able to get stuff because they still had a category for electronic cigarettes. Well, China put an end to that. As of May 1st, Alibaba will no longer have an electronic cigarette section on their website. So, well, between you and me, I know exactly what they're going to do. Yeah, some people are just going to walk away as the legislation's come in. And this happens in vape shops, too. As the legislation gets enacted, you get people that are strict, black and white, by the book kind of person. And they look at it and go, well, that's what the law is. And nothing I can do. I'll have to go and find something else to go do with my life. But realistically, when you got all your assets in the pot, and it's literally, that's what feeds your family. You do what you got to do to make ends meet. And that's something that the vape companies are now going to be doing too. You notice I picked up a set of coils 
for my Maxxis Max, because I love the thing so much, that MX-1 coil lasts as long as the coil's in my arbiter. Easy, two, maybe three weeks before I need to change the coils. In this case, pull the cotton out, dry burn the coil, clean it off, re-wick it, and I'm good to go. But I could save a half hour and just slap a new set of coils in for my Maxxis Max. So, something I noticed when I got this package, they're being truthful and honest. This product does not contain nicotine, so it's not on there. And to avoid regulatory uncertainty, the packages now state not intended for use with tobacco-derived e-liquids. There you go. I was watching uh, Phil and Dimitri on a replay that they had of uh, one of their last shows, and Dimitri was right about that part of it. All these industries have to do is simply put on there, not for use with tobacco products, period. Wash their hands. They are no longer providing vape supplies for nicotine vapors or tobacco product users in the United States. They are simply selling a product that doesn't fall under any regulations. This is just cotton. This is part of a personal fog machine. So, not a tobacco product, doesn't need PMTA. And you're gonna see a lot of that happening in the near future. Bet your bottom dollar on that. So, moving on. Start with our first bag. $500 is what we spent total on all of our little vape shop hopping that we did. Brick City Vapors was the first place to visit. And at Brick City, my wife picked up the Geek Vape L200. She loved her Aegis, and now she got herself the new version of it because of that color. Look at that. That is gorgeous. Now, something I noticed on this, this thing is a lot lighter than the Aegis Mac, but the internals on it, as long as it works, well, we'll be good to go. So, my wife is horrible with this type of gear. She doesn't do anything really to take care of it. She throws it around, she leaves it in her purse, picks it up, puts it on their nightstand, doesn't change the batteries until they're completely dead. Half the time when I pull them out of you know her mods, they're nice and toasty because she literally sucked those batteries dry. So we'll see how this Geek Vape L200 holds up with her. But that is a beautiful pink on the outside, purple by the control panel, going to almost a purplish blue Geek Vape L200. Gorgeous. And, uh, like I said, we had the conversation and we literally talked for probably a good hour and a half, almost two hours before we finally got around to making our purchase. Now, something I said when I did the review of the Drags X is on the news, I told you, I'm going to get the PMPX kit when it comes out because I'm all about that King Arthur. When I was growing up as a kid, King Arthur, Knights of the Round Table, man, that's an awesome movie. So naturally, when I saw she had this in stock, well, I had to get that. I'm bumping microphones here. I, I'm, this is crazy. Okay, so here is the beautiful gold Drag X PNPX kit. 
look at that leather, the imprint on that leather. I mean, that is just a gorgeous mod. So I'm gonna do a video comparing this Drag X PNPX kit with the other one, with the original one. And we're gonna see what the real differences are. But while we were there, we wanted to support her and her store. And if you happen to be in the Cleveland area, go pay a visit to Brick City Vapors, North Olmsted, Ohio. Lovely lady. And she'll take care of you. Now, one last thing that I picked up from her store was you know me, I'm rebuildables. Well, she told me about the TPPX pod tank. Now, this is a separate tank with a 510 pin on the bottom of it, but it's a magnetic pod that fits into that PNPX kit. And this has the TPP coils, which have a little more airflow, a little more vapor production, a little more direct lung like I love. So we'll be taking a closer look at that later on too. But beautiful, beautiful items. And the other thing that she told me was hardly anybody is in there buying rebuildable stuff. You got some diehard people like me that, you know, do mech mods and do direct long and rebuildable tanks and drippers and stuff like that. But she says probably 70, 80% of her sales are the disposables. So naturally while we were there, we had to pick one up. And that is where this hide bar could come from. Kind of looks like That Mag P3, Mag P3 I used to love. Well, one of the things that I was originally gonna do for vape mail for here was another Mag P3. I ordered one in gray. I talked about it already before on the news, but this hide bar was so good that my wife didn't use her Arbiter 2 for almost a whole week. I mean, if it was sitting on the end table when she came home from work, she would vape on the Arbiter 2. But at work, when she went out for a vape, she was doing these hide bars. And the thing lasted her probably a good week and a half, two weeks almost. It's amazing the technology differences between these new products like this Frio bar and the stuff that was available when I first wanted to quit smoking. This is fantastic. And she loved that hide bar. But disposables are flying off the shelf. And why not? You know, a smoker walks into a gas station. They don't want to sit there and go through, look through all this different stuff. They go in, they buy their usual brand, and they walk out the door. It's the same thing with the vape shops now. And it's a natural tendency for smokers to want to be able to use disposable products. Especially when they first quit. Because when they first quit, it's all about the same convenience you used to have. Instead of walking into a gas station, you walk into a vape shop. You uh, tell them what flavor you want or what you know product you want. Walk up, you pay for it to register, you show them your ID, and out the door you go. You're good to go. We'll be back next week. Well, not the state of affairs that I would like to see things going because these smokers nowadays aren't as vested in their quit smoking attempt as you and I were when we went to quit. You know, we went, spent a couple hundred bucks on something and it's like, okay, well, I'm not gonna waste, you know, a $200 investment in something. If I don't like the juice I originally got with it, let me go try a different juice. And we kept at it until we found exactly what we needed for our all day vape. 
that we're happy with all day long and then we didn't want cigarettes anymore. Well, smokers are doing the same thing, except now they're doing them with disposables simply because that's what has been readily available. What's it going to be like in six months? We have no idea. All depends on what the FDA decides to go and do. But it doesn't look good right now. We know that. For those of us who have been following the news, we know that. But it is what it is. And that is her attitude. It is what it is. She's going to keep getting products that she can sell. And she's going to keep the store open. So, obviously our next stop after Brick City Vapors was Fog Vapory, Fairview Park, Ohio. Another wonderful place to go and visit. And he didn't really have a whole lot of stuff in his clearance thing this time around, which is all right, because, you know, I don't have to have clearance stuff, but that's what I gravitate to because I can pick up a lot more on clearance than I can if I pay, you know, brand new full retail price for stuff. We looked around. Everything he had in the store, I pretty much already had or was on the way for, you know, something for a review or whatnot. But we talked and he's expanding his store too. We walked in there. There was shelves that were on one side. The partitions are down from COVID now. Well, he's got a bunch of wood stacked up in front of the counter because on the other side of the store, he's adding shelves to expand the inventory that he's got going on there. And his position on things has pretty much been to the point where do what you can, you know, you, you, you hope for the best, but you're always prepared for the worst. So he's on the verge of diversifying his operations and his business. He's um, looking into getting into, you know, tattoo shops and stuff too, but you have to go and pay him a visit. I mean, great guy. So while we were there, something on his shelf that piqued my curiosity was this Heisenberg. I, I see people talking on Reddit and on different forums all the time about, oh, Heisenberg's, oh, that's my thing now. I love it. Oh, it's fantastic. So I'm like, you know what? I got to find out what it's like. I mean... I can't comment on something unless you try it. I'm not that kind of person that, you know, judge people for one thing or the other until I've tried it and made my own decision on it. So I'm going to be giving that a try here in the near future. But while I was there, I definitely had to pick up some more squeezed green apple. I didn't really care for the peach, but man, that green apple was fantastic. So while we were there, my wife saw and fell in love with squeezed watermelon. Oh man, that is just like a juicy watermelon. A nice cold juicy watermelon in the summertime. That flavor you get on your mouth, how subtle it is and it's sweet and oh. The box is empty. Partially because of how long it took me to get to the doing this video, but the other part is because of how fantastic it was. We bought two bottles of it. He took the second bottle today because she already finished off the last one. And another one that we found was fantastic was banana. It smells like fresh, ripe bananas and has that beautiful banana flavor to it. Unbelievable. But goes to show you what 200 bucks, 250 bucks is going to buy in a vape shop nowadays. State of Ohio, 10 cent per milliliter tax. Well, whatever. It is what it is. While we were there, I also picked up some batteries. I've got Ohmwork. So we got Ohmwork, Ohm Life, and Ohm Alone. And if you take a look at it, 2,500 milliamp hour, 3,000 milliamp hour, and 3,300 milliamp hour. The 2,500 milliamp hour has maximum output 73 watts, 
whereas the bottom one's 44 watt. <coughs> I'm no battery mooch, but for curiosity's sake, I wanted to find out what do these actually work like? So I'm gonna be putting them in the squonk mods. I'm gonna see how they compare with each other. I'm gonna put them in dual battery box mods and check and see practical nature. What's the difference between the ohm work, the ohm life and the ohm alone? I know for a fact that I love the wraps that they put on these ohm batteries. They're nice and tough. I've yet to have to replace any of them. Unlike, you know, the Samsungs, that um, I do the 30 Qs and even these, um, even these Molly cells, the, the coating that they have, the wrap, the shrink wrap that's on the outside of it is not as tough as the own batteries. So that's another video that's gonna be coming up on the channel. And that literally right there is 500 bucks, almost. 400 some dollars. So the last place that we went to visit was up north when we went to go set up our camp. We stopped in at our tobacco store, aka vape shop, up in Clarion County, and picked up some coastal clouds. Got peach tea and citrus peach. This was sitting in their clearance bin. So I'll be excited to give them a try and find out how good these things really are. Sometimes you just got to go out on a limb and give it a shot. So time for us to move on to our next segment. Holy moly. I'm sorry, folks. I forgot the fourth word for the waffle. The fourth word for the waffle for the vape mail, vape shop visiting part is hashtag hunky vape. So write that on your little piece of paper, hashtag hunky vape. I'm sorry guys, I forgot about that. So now that I've done the hashtag hunky vape, I need to say the next segment that we got in the next keyword for our vape mail segment is thank. And yeah, you can pretty much guess the next one's gonna be thank you, but I'm not gonna say the whole sentence. So write down your piece of paper, hashtag hunky vape and thank. So all you gotta figure out is the last word, but I did get some vape mail in. Man, I thought that was a thing, thing of the past. Well. If the federal government wants to prevent us from being able to walk into um, a store that's close to us if we have one in the near future, or they prevent us from being able to get our packages that we order online because you're not allowed to ship it with UPS or FedEx or the mail anymore, well, we're only going to be left with one choice, and that's to be ordered from out of the country. So that's exactly what I did. And... Dash Vapes is fantastic. Let me tell you. I placed this order and had no intention of having this vape mail be the segment for this show. But they got it here that quick that I'm just flabbergasted. Utterly flabbergasted with how wonderful their service is their customer service. All right, so. My order from Dash Vape was for the Aspire Zelos X kit. Really intrigued me. You all know I've been an Aspire fan since the beginning because that was the first kit. I bought the Atlantis kit to try and quit smoking the first time. And it didn't do the job for me. However, this Odin was my all day vape for probably the first six months. 
because it wasn't the first quit kit that I used. I used the Bigfoot murder kit. But then the Odin came out, and that's what I used on my mag the whole time and loved it. So I wanted to get the Zelos X kit and find out if this is just as good of a vaping device as the previous kits. And I also got a new Nautilus 2S set of coils. So look for that review coming up on the channel. But the main reason why I was planning on getting something from Dash Vapes because I wanted to try out the number one selling watermelon peach from the Insulted line. Is this thing all it's cracked up to be? He makes it out to be like it's the God's gift of aping. So we're gonna be giving that thing a try here in a second. And the other thing I picked up is passion fruit flavoring. That's not for vaping. That's for mixing DIY liquid. But that's something else that Dash Vapes is doing. You go online to these all these other places and you know that you can go and buy CBD stuff, you can buy all this other stuff. Well, guess what? Dash Vapes is also selling flavorings. So if there's flavoring that you can't get because Bull City Flavors is out of it, well, give Dash Vapes a try. Take a look on their website and see if they have the flavoring that you are looking for. You never know. They're not just selling flavoring, so they're not gonna have a massive selection of things but they do have flavorings so keep them in the back of your mind i was thoroughly impressed when i saw flavorings on their website shows you how out of touch i am with what um the vape stores up in canada are selling i did check out um gas city vapes but the stuff they already had i already had so sorry guys i'm not gonna order something i don't need all right so now, I said we're gonna do the commercial tasting. The word for the commercial tasting is you. So you can put it together. Thank you is the last segment in this segment. Hashtag hunky vape, thank you. So let me take this watermelon peach from the unsalted line and throw a fresh coil into my Odin and we'll be right back to taste this commercial e-liquid. Uh, watermelon peach, the number one best-selling flavor in the unsalted line. All right, ladies and gentlemen, I finally have the Aspire V-Rod paired up with the Aspire Odin. Changed the drip tip to make it a little bit more matchy-matchy from what the one that was on there. Got this thing set at 55 watts. Gonna give it a try. Watermelon peach from the insulted line.
Wow. Watermelon peach. When I first vaped on it, because it's so different to what I'm used to, I'm used to my blue raspberry cotton candy. Matter of fact, lately I've been, I formulated a Euro OG blue based on some Euro flavorings that I picked up. This is so different than that. And it, it's a watermelon peach. What an unusual combination. When I first got it, I'm like, I don't know if I really like this. But the more I vape on it, it's like. I can't put it down. After the first vape on it, it was like, okay, I'm getting like that, that reddish color peach flavoring did you get? And then I get this kind of like watery watermelon flavor. It's so subtle. Damn you, Phil. I really like this juice. And, I, and, it's, and it's not that I'm mad because I like this juice. It's mad because I know my wife's going to love it and I ain't going to see it. What the hell? I see why it's the number one selling flavor in the insulted line. I see why you use it every day. That shit grows on you. What the hell? I said that already. All right, all right, all right. Unfortunately, folks, I know how long this video already is. So I think we've reached the end of the vlog. The last section that I have is for the final word of the day. And it technically isn't a word. It's a punctuation mark. Because we've got a waffle going on. And you got to put together the words that I already gave you. And it makes a complete sentence. And it is going to be on a t-shirt. Yeah, I'm in the process of getting it set up. My wife makes t-shirts and crafts and hobbies and custom cups and epoxy cups. And but we'll get to that at another time and date. Because I've kept you guys way too long already. I'm so sorry. However, you take that complete sentence that you've made, leave it as a comment below, and when we do our next show, whether it be the live show or whether I get to the thousand subs first, whichever one it is, I'm going to go back, I'm going to take all the comments that have the correct sentence in it, and then I'm going to take and put that into a random number generator and we're going to do it live. So, nobody can say we're messed with the system. And whoever the winner is, you'll have to get a hold of me, get on the phone, and you'll be able to pick out whatever you want. Fair game, no holds barred. So, I sincerely thank the 750 plus people that have already subscribed to this channel. I plan on putting on a lot more content. Once I get everything cleaned up and organized in here, get the studio completely done, get the sound treatment done that I should have focused on first. Go figure. Anyway, thank you so much for subscribing and following and watching all these videos that I have been putting together and putting out there. I keep trying to make them better and better. You've told me more and something I've learned, it's hard when you're editing this stuff to cut out stuff. But I truly do need to cut out some of the superfluous things that are in there and make things as compact and as succinct as possible to get this information out there and to break out of our bubble because vaping empowers so easily. 
smokers to stop their deadly habit and improve their health outcomes. And all it takes is a wonderful flavor like this watermelon peach. And anybody can easily quit smoking. Wait a minute. Watermelon peach isn't the only flavor that's out there, is it? Oh my goodness. We mixed up tropical rush and we mixed up jacked up grape and we haven't tasted them yet. One last thing. Sorry. One last thing. Tropical Rush. I got it on a Bushido. Gonna put that on there. Give that a second for the wick to soak that up. Where's my other Bushido? I prepped two of these. I told you, this office is a disaster zone. Let me show you what I mean. Look, there's the ceiling treatment I put up. And there is the part I still have left to put up. But that's gonna be a big thick panel of rock wool. It's gonna be hanging from the ceiling right there in the corner. You get rid of this standing waves problem. But look at my desk. This is a disgusting mess. And that right there, that's the monitor that I don't want to break. My wife got that for me. It's a curved monitor. Make it easier for my old eyes to be able to see what I got up there. So how about I get this other Bushido juiced up using this jacked up grape. We just mixed today, April 9th. Juice that up real nice. That's the one thing I love about this Bushido is you can flood that tank and that check mark airflow system that he's got on there will not leak. Fantastic. Oh, that sucked that up good. Tropical Rush. What's this Tropical Rush like? Turn the Ultroner Gaia on. Going at 25 watts right now. Coils reading 0.43. Bump it up to 30. 35. Tropical Rush. Tastes like a pina colada. Flavor's kind of subtle. Might have to bump up those percentages just a hair. Doesn't really have a whole lot of sweetness either. but it's definitely a pina colada. Well, that's pretty good. Man, am I glad I mixed that up. Always great to try new things. You just never know what flavor you never even thought about is gonna taste fantastic. All right, turn the DNA mod on. DNA reference mod, got to set in watt mode, 25 watts. There's my gray Bushido. I talk about Bruce a lot, but he hasn't sent me nothing. And I love his stuff. So I don't want you to think it's because he's been sending me something. He hasn't sent me nothing. I get the grape flavor. That jackfruit is different. 
Not really getting much of the line. Turn the water jump on this one too. Let's go right up to 30. That woke up the flavoring. Ooh. Wow. Yeah, I can definitely tell this is more of a candy flavor. Mm-hmm. I get the grape. It isn't prominent. Like, it isn't like the forefront flavor. It's a blending of grape and jackfruit. Mmm. Ooh, is that delicious? I've got three new flavors today that I love. This is amazing. Jacked up grape. Fantastic. This is one that I'm gonna just tweak just a hair. Put a little more of that lime in there, see if I can get it to give it a little more bite. Not so much of a dual note. I'm getting the grape and I'm getting the jackfruit, but there's no real bite to it. And then there's just like this lingering candy-ish flavor that's sweet and just delicious. Oh, this is exactly why I want to do a live show about just trying these recipes. If they're off, there's something wrong with them, make a minor tweak to it and get these juices tried out. And once we try them out, if they're good, we're going to rate them and put them out there and let you guys try them and, and explore your taste buds. Cause I don't ever want any of you to go back to smoking cigarettes. Fantastic. Oh, I can't believe I almost forgot to try these things out on camera. They are so delicious. Mmm. And that watermelon peach, the flavors are so strong compared to the ones we just made. What are these gonna taste like tomorrow or next week? I guess I'm gonna have to make another video and we'll find out. So, once again, I truly wanna thank all of you that have subscribed to this channel. You truly do inspire me to keep pushing this vape advocacy out there. It's not on YouTube, it's on Twitter or Facebook or, I made plenty of calls to my local politicians. They're getting sick of hearing me. I mean, they probably have my number in there. I'm surprised they haven't blocked it already. We need to fight for our rights to vape. So please take five minutes out of your day. Get on Twitter, get on Facebook, get on social media, write a letter to the newspaper, call your local politician, let them know how you feel. Let them know that you need these products to stay away from deadly combustible tobacco. And that's it. That's all there is to it. Hmm. Well, time for me to go introduce these flavors to my wife. See how many of them I'm going to lose and have to make my own. I hope she doesn't take this watermelon peach. But thank you guys. I'll see you on the next video. Peace, love, and a hunky vape is all you need to stay away from deadly combustible tobacco. Have a great day.